Never have I entered into any course with such a sense of necessity, of duty, like this journey to Alaska. I can't face the thought of the loneliness I'm going into, but the notion of failure is 100 times more dreadful. Art and nature lovers have a special opportunity to explore the wonders of Alaska through the eyes of two artists whose lives are a century apart. One artist is Rockwell Kent, a painter and illustrator who spent much of his later life at Asgard, a farm in Osable Forks, New York. Before that, he moved to a small island in Alaska for about seven months in 1918. And the other artist is our guest with me, filmmaker Eric Downs of Kenai, Alaska. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. You've made a short film about Rockwell Kent called A Dreamer Search that we will be showing on Mountain Lake PBS. What was the genesis for this film? In 2014, my cousin, who's a, a New York artist, um, was going through a rough time in her life, and I invited her to come up to Alaska to spend some quality time together. Um, I flew her to Alaska and I said, you know, isn't there some guy named Rockwell Kent that's from New York that, that came to Alaska way back when? And she, of course, knew of the story. And I said, well, let's go on an adventure out there. I want to, you know, go out to the island. Um, and so we had planned to go and stay at the lodge out on the island. Um, but just prior to that visit, um, I had gotten in contact with the uh, foremost expert of the Rockwell Kent story, uh, author and historian Doug Capra. And Doug met us down at the coffee shop before we took the, the ferry over to Fox Island. And he came into the coffee shop with binders under his arms of letters and stories and photos of Rockwell Kent's adventure. And I was instantly captivated by the journey that Rockwell Kent took. And so that planted the seed for what would be uh, a dreamer search. I shall work with all my energy and paint with all my heart. I just hope that is enough. Faithfully yours, Rockwell Kent. What is it about the artist Rockwell Kent that makes him an appealing subject for a short film? I think it's his appetite for adventure and his desire to explore the unknown. Um, so much more than just a painter or an illustrator, uh, just his uh, overwhelming desire to explore and push himself to explore. And hasn't there always been a connection between you and Rockwell Kent? Yes, my mom and dad uh, grew up in Keysville, New York, uh, 10 miles away from Osable Forks. And so growing up, traveling back to the Adirondacks uh, every summer to visit family and spend time with my grandparents, I had always heard the name Rockwell Kent, but it wasn't until later in life that I decided to learn more about his story. Where was he living at the time when he visited Alaska? Yeah, he was living uh, in New York City. Uh, he was struggling to make ends meet to support his family, his growing family. He had been through a series of uh, failed attempts to launch his art career, to get the attention of the New York City art scene. Um, and so this journey to Alaska was really his last chance to find a place that would inspire him to create a body of work, to create that buzz and, and launch his career. And as we see from your film, what an inspiring place your home state of Alaska is. And you shot your film on the very same island where Rockwell Kent visited when he went to Alaska. It's the place where by chance you'd taken that trip with your cousin to connect yourselves with some art history. How did the actual location, that island, move you as a filmmaker? Yeah, Fox Island is just an absolute magical place. And I took a chance trip there um, at a time in my life when I was letting distractions get in the way of, of my true calling. Um, and being surrounded by that silence, those mountains, the ocean, uh, really helps a person focus in and uh, reconnect with that uh, deeper sense of self. So I returned to the island uh, many times after that, and that kind of began the process of me chasing my dream as a filmmaker. And you mentioned your true calling. 
Is that you as a filmmaker? Yeah, storytelling. As a storyteller, uh, as a filmmaker, um, that's what I was meant to do. And I had let uh, distractions and roadblocks get in the way of that, and mainly fear. Um, that's one of the reasons I connected with Rockwell Kent's story so much, the amount of courage that it took for him to travel across the country and put himself in that environment and put it all on the line when it mattered most. So what were you doing? If you weren't a filmmaker, what were you doing? Yeah, my background is in construction. I was running the family construction business, uh, building buildings, doing projects. Um, and while, you know, uh, that's a worthy career, I just had a hard time thinking of it in terms of legacy and how was I helping others and sharing these stories um, that deserve to be passed on to future generations. So you set out to make your first film. Did anything happen during the filmmaking process that took you by surprise? Oh, so many things happened. Um, the one thing that sticks out in my mind was the first day of shooting, our forecast for the Pacific Ocean and this remote island was partly sunny. Uh, our very first uh, couple scenes we were shooting was on this boat out in the ocean with our lead actor and our young actor that was playing Rocky. Uh, towards the end of the shoot, all of a sudden, torrential downpour. And so I was standing there on the island, waiting for the boat to come in, thinking that the whole day of shooting could be in jeopardy, uh, wondering what this young actor's reaction would be. Um, you know, it wouldn't have surprised me if he would have jumped off the boat and said, you know, I'm not doing this anymore, uh, you know, which I wouldn't have held against him. But instead, Ivor popped out of the boat with a big smile on his face and said, you know, this is fun, and uh, poured the water out of his rubber boot and, and had a big smile on his face. So uh, I guess that was one of the big takeaways is not trying to control the outcome of the journey, uh, really embracing the journey itself and letting the story take the lead. And what a story it is according to your film. Mom? What kinds of inner demons was Rockwell Kent battling during his Alaskan adventure? No one put as much pressure on Rockwell Kent as Rockwell Kent himself. Rockwell Kent was studying to be an architect at Columbia University. Halfway through his studies, he quit school and decided to become an artist. His mother laughed at that decision and she said, you'll never make it as an artist. I believe it was that challenge put forth to him by his mother that he smirked at and really decided that he was gonna show her that he was gonna make it. And before his adventure to Alaska, there had been many pursuits and failures trying to launch his successful art career. And so those failures were beginning to weigh on him. Uh, he was slipping into depression. His growing family was relying on him to support them financially. And so all these things were building and building, and he knew it was just a matter of time before he was, had to give up on that dream of becoming an artist and become a businessman or an architect in New York City just to support his family. So Alaska was his last attempt to try and resolve that. So how did going to Alaska change Rockwell Kent? Internally, I really think the journey to Alaska, that solitude and isolation was a great reset point for him. Uh, externally, the work that he created in Alaska upon his return was wildly successful. All of the drawings sold immediately all the paintings were uh, very successful. Uh, the journal that he kept on the island was published into a best-selling book. So Alaska was the absolute catalyst for his successful career. Oh, that sounds like an amazing turning point in his life 
and you had an amazing turning point in your life going from construction to filmmaking, but where did you learn the art of filmmaking? I would have to say on the job site. Um, my background as a construction manager has really transferred over to the practical side of filmmaking, uh, putting together a budget, putting together a plan, and then most importantly, putting together the right team to execute that plan. On the creative side and the storytelling side, I have always been one to kind of go my own way. So I didn't go to film school, I didn't uh, take a bunch of classes. I spent my time uh, on the trail, walking, on the, walking in the footsteps of these characters and learning their stories, uh, really trying to focus on the deeper meaning behind some of these stories uh, so that I could share them with a wider audience. Well, your film is successful. It's been accepted into several film festivals, and you participated in a mini symposium about Rockwell Kent, real close to his home territory, on the campus of SUNY Plattsburgh, where he has paintings in the Rockwell Kent Gallery. Unless you have a personal connection to that story, dragging yourself over the finish line is going to be incredibly hard. And I know you have more adventures ahead of you and more stories to tell. What are you working on next? Yeah, I'm working on a pure narrative uh, set in modern day that explores a 20-something social media influencer that travels to Alaska to document the receding glaciers. Uh, her world is made up of swipes, likes, and clicks, and blips. And uh, when she arrives in Alaska, her world is turned upside down when she's lost in the Alaskan wilderness she's forced to rely on her primal instincts that are completely disconnected from her world. And uh, she has to use those natural instincts to find her way back home. Well, that sounds like a very inspiring story, just like the Rockwell Kent story was inspiring. I wanna thank you so much, Eric, for sharing your story with us and for offering your film to the viewers of Mountain Lake PBS. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was my absolute pleasure. Journey to mountainlake.org to discover when A Dreamer's Search is airing on Mountain Lake PBS. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.